Aloha, and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the beautiful studios of downtown Honolulu in the Pioneer Plaza. We're a show that focuses on business topics in Hawaii. We highlight individuals and businesses that have success here. Despite the challenges, there are success stories, and we try to discuss and, and talk about the tricks of the trade and how they happen to pull that off. Uh, occasionally, we'll get into different peripheral topics, uh, and today is one of those days. Uh, we've got two of the GOP leaders uh, in uh, Hawaii, in the House of Representatives, uh, with us today, uh, Gene Ward and Andrea Tapola. Uh, both of them will be here to talk a little bit about what's going on in their districts, uh, what the business implications are, uh, and maybe some of the legislation that's going on, and, and we might even get into a little bit of a, an update on uh, the new role that Andrea is doing uh, over in the house. So welcome, Gene and Andrea. It's good to have you back. Hello. Hmm? Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for having us. Exactly. Now, you, you are the two, really, um, in my opinion anyways, the leaders of, of the GOP in the house right now. And Gene, you've, you've done this for many, many years as, as one of the, um, I guess, the, uh, the senior uh, Republican it's called members. emeritus, uh, minority leader emeritus. There you so, go. Yeah, this is the new minority. And the new one, right? And so now Andre is inheriting a lot of, of what's going on right now. So this is um, a new role for you, right? Yes, it's my first year being the minority leader. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. I guess uh, a lot to learn. Learning curve pretty steep. Uh, the learning curve has been steep since I got elected. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of content. It's a lot of topics. It's a lot of players that you have to study and get to know in a very short amount of time. Well, and there's an awful lot of activity with the bills. And I guess as the numbers dwindle, more and more has to be reviewed by fewer and fewer people. So you guys must be really busy, right? Yes. 2,000 bills that in the beginning start out the session, but then in the end there's probably 250, maybe 300 at the most. So a lot of the stuff gets kind of like chief blows away. A lot of bills that don't make a lot of sense, which hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about uh, Well, later. yes, and some of those we do hope will just go away. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I don't <laughs> want to downplay the fact that it may not be the numbers. Even if we had 10 bills, some of the bills are 62 pages, 75 oh, pages. So of course. you have to be so <laughs> meticulous about the way that you go through a bill because things can be hidden. They can change content in a committee, and then you have to be aware of it. And sometimes do they try to hide it when they change content? you got to try to find it? Uh, what did Joe Suki uh, get quoted by saying in the newspaper last week? Well, we're always secretive. I mean, we, have, we do secretive. You know, he probably shouldn't have said that. I don't know if it was an open microphone or something, but he shouldn't really say that. I mean, because a lot of the stuff behind closed doors comes out on the floor, and people don't know really the rationale behind some of the stuff mm -hmm. that passes. Yeah, well, that's, that's and that's what makes it so hard for the layperson to you know really get mm. their hands around this and mm. to be able to follow things. And it's important to have, I guess, the local representatives there to, to explain some of the things that are going on and, and help educate the, the people in your district. And, and I know you're, you're both very good at doing that. Yeah, and I think it's for our bills, it's just it's more than just the, the words on the paper. It's who is proposing it, what's the backstory, why do we need it? And that's what our job is, is to educate our district so that they know how to support us or how to bring us information on important topics. You know, and I guess, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the ways to do that is through the neighborhood boards? To some uh, extent. The, I'm there every month giving my report, five, five minutes or so, and I want you to know, Reg, that's how I cut my teeth to be a representative. I went on the neighborhood board. I was the transportation chair. I was on the neighborhood board, too. Okay. There, for you who are out there and uh, thinking about getting into politics, the neighborhood board is the kind of the, uh, the trainer, boot camp, if you will, yeah. Yeah. as it goes. But... Reg, when we get to the community issues, I want to mention that I have a beer summit this Thursday, mm. and that's where we kind of share and distribute information. But this time, we have the beer summit, as usual, at Kona Brewery, but we have also a drone demonstration. So if anybody from Hawaii is watching and they want to see what a real live drone is flying over the Coco Marina, and for probably about 15, 20 minutes, to see all the ins and outs of how they control it, what it looks mm. like, and then talk about it bit of the regulations that are going to say, yeah, don't get by near my bathroom window or all these other yeah. things. There's a lot of privacy issues that people well, are fearful. And I was at the, the Waikai Neighborhood Board just earlier this week, and it was uh, very educational. A lot of issues are coming up. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are being discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's become a little bit of a touchy point is the, the drone legislation that uh, mm -hmm. is being proposed. You know, and I don't know, do you have drone issues out uh, in uh, no. your end of town? 
I think recently in the neighborhood board we discussed uh, some of the issues we have with solar farms. Mm -hmm. I mean, Waianae is known for the amount of sun that we have, and we have solar farms popping up everywhere. And so one of the bills that was put through by the energy um, chair was to actually give some type of incentive or some type of energy rebate program to those who have these huge energy farms. Because as of right now, if you have an energy farm in your district, doesn't mean that your electric bill is cheaper. Oh. It means that you pay the same as everybody else, but that you have an energy farm here. So so just things like that where I feel like there's certain things that are specific to y and I. I mean, for businesses, with all the amount of work they're doing on Farrington, a lot of them have had, had like, having to, uh, I guess, make up for the fact that their entrances are being blocked by construction and, you know, they're down as far as their income. So those are the kind of things we're facing because we have a lot of projects moving around in the west side. Well, and they say all politics is local, right? So you've got a lot of local issues out there, and, and I know just crossing their street can be a challenge. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. We have a lot of pedestrian issues. Yeah, we actually have a, a contest that we're, we're um, closing up tomorrow, I believe, is all the entries will be um, handed in. We did a pedestrian flag program. So basically it's where all the unsignalized crosswalks now have flags. The point of the flags is not to replace anything else you know, any common sense, it's supposed to encourage common sense, meaning that you use the flag to make eye contact with the driver, make sure they see you, you see them, you use the flag to get across safely, and it's kind of bringing people back to the basics. You know, and I, I think personally I, I find that to be needed because I think I've heard so much rhetoric about how the pedestrians have the right of way, that they're, they should be allowed to enter the crosswalk, and, and I don't want to disagree with that, but it takes joint responsibility. You can't just blindly walk into a crosswalk without True, Reg, being... but look, technology is available. Look, I applaud my colleague for getting white, uh, yellow flags, and, and you, on their own dime, they're paying. Yes. It's not DOT. It's community program. Their own dime to protect their people, of which now with LED, very inexpensive, they can do a small little puka in the road and make the thing flash when people are walking or they can have the signs and it's not big cost and I, I find the rhetoric that you're just talking about to me is unacceptable we should not have people dying in the crosswalk it's, it's, it's but shouldn't it's they have some responsibility for There's, their own yeah, safety the education of the, of the walkers and that's the of course, point I was making course. well and yeah, I think I that in, in Waianae they had that they had the flashers in the crosswalk and they got dug out and stolen and so DOT, what? yes. So DOT is <laughs> not in favor of putting the blinkers in the ground anymore. God. And so I will go back to what you said about personal responsibility because this is a program run by the community. It's being owned by the community, which means more community members are protective of these items as mm -hmm. opposed to, oh, that's state stuff. Oh, yeah, dig it out, steal it. This is, oh, that's our stuff. It's kind of like stealing the copper. I mean, right. they're, 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 yes. there's some value there, so they're going after it. So it's mm -hmm. not that I discourage any type of lit crosswalk idea. I think we should bring it out, but there has to be an uh, increase because nobody's teaching that in school anymore. They don't tell kids anymore how to cross the road. Everyone's looking at their phone, walking, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not paying attention to what's going on. I mean, we live in a time of unawareness. You know, and, and, you know, and I don't want to make too much of it, but if I'm walking, and I'm a pedestrian a lot, I walk all over downtown all the time, and there's a lot of heavy traffic down here. Before I walk into a crosswalk, I'll make eye contact with the drivers, and I'll usually let the 6,000-pound car go first, so then I don't have to worry about it anymore. Like if they saw you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, but there's, a, but there's a, an awful lot of other issues going on as well, you know, um, Gene, you know, some of the issues that I heard about at the, the neighborhood board, I mean, you're very involved in some of the... You heard about the horses having to be evacuated because of the brush fire that was fire. nearby with the Cocoa Crater Stables? They took it down to a shopping center in town, uh, close to the, the stables. Well, everybody's really happy that the stables is open again. There's 22 horses. Uh, hopefully, they're going to be able to break even, make money. Whereas before, in the five years, the city and county almost shut them down. And the, the, the difficulty is they've only given them a 12-month lease. To really put in the money and fix all the buildings and put new roofs in, they need five or ten years. Yeah, of, who's uh, going to make uh, any type of leasehold improvements lease. with a 12 month Exactly. Lease. It's not common sense. No, it's not. So that's a big issue. The other thing is we've got a, a Hawaii Homeless Task Force. We had, because of the sit and lie in different areas where people have actually were right on the marina front for almost uh, three months without being known because it, it was so thick, uh, 20 people mm. in which... People woke up and said, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? So we're alert to a lot of things that are going on. 
the great lounges have the uh, the carnival. Yeah. Yeah. carnival. Yeah. All the kids. Did you go out and do rides? No, yeah. but I went to my parents <laughs> and I saw the, the carnival going. It's a great thing for the kids. As long as they don't put a shopping strip mall or other kind of thing there, we 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 love it. It's it's. Well, it's good. nice to have the option of being able to do different things out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we, it's a pretty versatile community. Yeah, no, it's it's good. Um, we're going to be taking a short break, and then when we come back, what I'd like to do, if, if you're okay with it, is to just talk a little bit about the current session and what some of ah, the different sure. bills are that's... We'll uh, talk politics, you mean? Well, yeah, well, yeah, a little bit, you know, imagine <laughs> okay. that. Good show. <laughs> but, um, but we're going to take a short break. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we're here with two of the leaders of the GOP, and we're going to talk a little bit about the legislative session and what some of the bills are that uh, is working their way through the process. So we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hi, I'm Tim Apicello. I'm the host of Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic issues here on Oahu. Uh, join us every other Tuesday at 12 noon, and as we discuss how we try to solve our traffic headaches, not to, not to include just the rail, but transit and carpooling and everything in between. So join us every other Tuesday, moving Hawaii forward. Thank you. Aloha kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here today talking with Baljean and Andrea about some of the legislative bills that are going through the uh, session this year. Um, you know, Andrea, I guess you're kind of taking the lead of the GOP this, uh, this session and, and hopefully in future sessions. So you've got your hands full, and, and I guess you're relying a little bit on Gene to help get through all of this. Uh, uh, I think that at the legislature, we have our colleagues in our caucus, but we have 51 of us. And so I think uh, my motto is always work together when you can, work alone when you have to. There you go. <laughs> and all so right. this past week in the health committee, we did have the uh, assisted suicide bill. Mm -hmm. And that was actually one of the probably hot topics of the session. We also have the rail boat coming through, but that hearing was over 300 people in attendance, and it lasted wow. three and a half hours. That was a, a marathon session. Yeah. Yeah, and and from what I understand, it's it's kind of it it doesn't look like it's going to pass this year. Well, the bill got deferred in the health committee, which means that it hasn't been referred to judiciary and definitely isn't on for third reading. However, there has been talk that you know it could be revived from the dead. Never be surprised because well, it's happened before. It's happened before. <laughs> so we're kind of trying to hold it down, and and it's for those who are in favor of it. They were also in concern with the way the bill was written. So those on both sides of the issue, I think, left the hearing feeling edified, educated. Mm -hmm. Lots of people said that they learned way more than they ever knew about this issue. So, Yeah, and I guess it can be a very emotional issue. Yes, mm -hmm. it definitely can. But when it comes down to it, we're supposed to make good public policy, which means that we read through laws and we determine whether or not this implemented exactly as it is, word for word, is this good for the general public. I heard a, a saying uh, yesterday or the day before that we can't let perfect be the enemy of good. Well, yeah, that was at the neighborhood board, as a matter of fact. Was that yeah, what that came was? from one of the presenters. Yeah. You can't let perfect be the enemy of good. I thought that was very well. I in fact, that was from HSTA, uh, uh, Corey Rosenley, who gave his presentation on a taxation, which is my issue that I would highlight for the session. The 800-pound gorilla is the GE perpetual tax extension. Mm. Uh, which for my district, not any happy campers would like to see a perpetual uh, increase uh, for forever and ever. But that's related to what happened yesterday. We had about a 15, 20 minute floor debate on whether <clears throat> we should become a sanctuary city. Oh boy. And the way that there were so many people bad mouthing uh, the Trump administration, it's like, Look, you guys want the 1.5 billion, but you're going to turn around and just throw not only the travel ban, but all of these other issues, such as a sanctuary city, which not too many were overly excited about it. But it's where, if we are going to wake up and realize we no longer have Daniel Inouye, 
We don't have Senator Kaka, and we don't have Obama, who's been putting so much money into the budget year after year after year without any, needing any legislation. We've got to get our congressional delegation to say, okay, guys, we're going to come up, we're going to talk nice for a while because we need the money for what now, Rich, 20, over 20% 20 of our budget is federal money. If they're going to turn the spigot off, who's going to hurt? All the people of Hawaii. Well, and then there's also the piece that comes into the state from the DOD and the military that are here as well. And, and they're looking at increasing that budget, which is great, but they also can be looking at other options on where these assets can be placed that they always keep coming up with. And, you know, to your point, you know, we, we used to have a very strong congressional delegation. <laughs> Uh, and we may have a very talented one right now, but they're also very junior. And they're kind of too partisan. You know, Senator Stevens and Senator Inouye, I mean, those were Democrats and Republicans doing the best for Alaska, doing the best for Hawaii. I don't think we have that same relationship now. Yeah. Well, well, and I would share, too, that within the contents of the bill, you know, it said possibly that it was alluding to being a sanctuary city, but that they had changed it. So the representative who pr presented it said that her... Um, intent was that if we help with federal immigration that we should be getting some money to support our local law enforcement. However, the way that the bill was written, it actually said that if federal immigration requests local law enforcement support, that they should decline. And the way that I look at it is that we make laws and HPD enforces laws and the judiciary interprets laws. And I think there's a reason why we have separate uh, powers mm -hmm. and if we step into the law enforcement um, arena without any I think knowledge of case by case what's going on in there I think we've overstepped what our jurisdiction is. You know, traditionally I think we've always had a atmosphere of cooperation among the different uh, policing entities at the federal and state and city mm. and county level. I mean they've always seemed to work together right. in the past. Yeah. We don't want to rock that boat too much. We don't want to start creating a divide. They are claiming the Tenth Amendment, which says if, unless it says that it's the power of the federal, it's reserved as the power of the state. And I think they're misinterpreting that to where it's silent about silent uh, mm. about uh, sanctuary cities. And by the way, if it walks and looks like a duck, it probably is one. Right. So she, the author says, well, no, it doesn't mean sanctuary cities, but it's explained and actually by description is one of those. So the Tenth Amendment is, is their legal argument, but in actuality, I say it's not a sanctuary city bill, it's a budget bill, because if we push this, and Su Speaker Suki is in love with the rail, the 1.5 billion, if that 1.5 billion is threatened, we have cut our nose to spite our face in terms of this logic. Uh, you know, and I think we all know that President Trump keeps an ear to this kind of thing. They, they look for cooperation. He just made an announcement, what, today, that he's going after the conservative group that voted against the uh, Obamacare. The health care. Uh, yeah, the health care revision. Uh, and he starts, and he's naming names. You're not going to send this so program to him, the, the point is, well, he watches it, but uh, <laughs> the point is, um, you know, he, he's aware of this stuff. He hears this, and he's got people telling him. And if we become too much in the face of opposition, there will be retaliation. And it's not necessary, Rich. It's just not necessary. Well, and I think that here in Hawaii, they say that all the time, that relationships is everything. The way we work with DOT is super important. Mm. The way we work DOE, and we don't get adversarial with them because we are supposed to work in cooperation. Mm -hmm. And so as we kind of proceed through this new federal uh, outfit that we have to wear, we have to keep that in mind, that here in Hawaii, we know how to keep our relationships good, and I want us to keep our federal relationships good, not because we need to bow down to them, but because we have to work together. Reg, the other 400-pound gorilla, not 800 pounds like the rail tax, but the 400-pound gorilla is what car you drive, how much it weighs, how much you paid for it, because the potholes have still left a big dent of uh, a lack of money. So No, no to pun intended, right? <laughs> Probably intended, but unconsciously. Uh, where if you, your car is worth a lot of money, you're going to pay more money. If your car is old like mine, you don't pay very much. Or if you drive a lot of miles, like all the way from West uh, Oahu, you, there's a by a mileage uh, rate that you could pay, or from the old traditional way, it's the amount of uh, weight of your car. So they got three bites at the apple. Which one's going to come out and, and gouge the people? Just stay tuned, but it's it's coming. Right, and I would say that DOT is funded through um, taxes, fees, and federal money. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that want to see our roads get better, they want DOT to put all the capacity projects back on the on the plate to be built. Yeah, all of that is going to 
be tax increases because that's the way the funding structure is set up for DOT. Mm -hmm. And so I know that the governor said it last year that whether we like it or not, it's coming back. I mean, DOT basically is cutting back a lot because they know that exactly what he said, the fuel you know, tax is not coming in as strong as it was. People are driving electric cars. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're toying with this road usage charge, which is not going to be implemented, but proposed in 2019 from the study that they do. You know, we, we, uh, we've got a lot of projects. There's a lot of infrastructure out there that's old, it's breaking, it's got to get fixed. Um, you know, where's the balance between keeping things current and working and taxing people to death? I mean, there's, there's got to be a balance in here somewhere. Rich, for what Trump has said in terms of infrastructure and a big investment, I'd like to see investment in the 203,000 acres that the Hawaiian Homes uh, Commission is... Um, given to watch over and to give back to the Hawaiians. Mm. After 96 years of that bill, we've got 9,600 lessees mm. on the land with 27,000 waiting for the land. And the big barrier is not the land, which usually to build houses in Hawaii, the land is the big issue. The issue now after having the land is the infrastructure. So there will be some gestures, if you will, communication, hopefully negotiation, to get some of that infrastructure money from the Trump administration to build the homes for the Hawaiians, of which we asked 96 years ago, restore the dignity, restore the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the people to the land that they no longer have. It's imperative. That's got to be done. I mean, it's got to address the housing shortage that we've got in this state. Um, but it's not going to be done if we keep poking our finger in, in the president's right. eye. And I would like to say, while we're asking Good for things point. that we want, you know, we have roads in our district that are military owned, that are not being repaired, that are locked to our community. I would like to see the military repair them. I would mm -hmm. like to see these roads be open as there's a lot of different military um, uh, personnel that live in Waianae that work in Schofield, but you have to drive all the way around, go through Wahiwa. There's a shortcut. There actually is a road. <laughs> it exists. It needs to be repaired. I'm, I'm working with, you know, uh, Rep. Gabbard on that, but exactly what Jean said is we got to think about the things that we need and how we're going to push forward and get those things so that we can make Hawaii better, knowing that we're getting taxed to death. What are our other options to get the infrastructure up to par? Yep. No, we, we have to. And infrastructure is a big push going on right now that Trump has announced. I, I would love to be able to figure out how to take advantage of that. Me too. First, if you don't ask, you don't get, is the saying that yep. uh, we have at our household. If you don't ask, you don't get. So yeah. th there's going to be an ask. And Very good. Any other hot topics going on that uh, we should be aware of? Top of mind, I think, are the ones that we probably mentioned. And then some of the, the regular. We're always doing the nickel and dime regulations. Fees are going to be increased. Mm -hmm. Some of them won't come up for another couple of years. but. Those, you know, licensing and other things, you know, from 100 bucks it may go to 500 Those are subtle things that kind of take place on the side. Uh, there's a bill that says if you park in a, um, a handicap zone, 500 to $1,000 is going to be the price. I, evidently, there's been some abuse in that regard. There was a bill about mm. increasing the fines for our speeding in school zones as well. Mm. And today we're going to be talking about airport authority and finance. So they're toying with the idea that the DOT airports is just non-functional and so they're trying to figure out a way to make it into authority so that it can interface mm. better with the federal aviation mm. administration so uh I'm, I'm not totally sure i feel like the uh, airport authority is a good idea my only concern would be that we have to mandate that those people have expertise in airports i had heard and you might be able to confirm this but i had heard from some of my pilot friends that, that utilize the facilities out there that at the DOT that has, I guess, the umbrella responsibility for managing all of this, um, the entire airport, all the airports for the entire state only has one pilot on board. They only have one pilot in the Department of Transportation that has any aviation experience I at all. I want to say that that's probably correct. I've heard that there's none, but maybe there's <laughs> one. But the, the fact of the matter is that all of these pilots want somebody who knows what they're going through, knows yeah. aviation, understands hangars, understands. And that's my concern with if we put forth this airport authority, is that it should be mandated that there be a component of it that they have to have this expertise. As of right now, the bill suggests that they have the expertise. Wouldn't that be a novelty to have people put in positions where they actually had some experience? <laughs> well, but you, when you mentioned the airport, we got to get away from being a third world uh, stopover. Uh, with the way, sorry, but you know, I had friends who just came back from Asia. One of the friends of the producer of the show, in fact, he said, it's embarrassing to come back to Honolulu after you go into the Hong Kong, the Kuala Lumpur, and all the other airports, and you've got a wiki wiki bus, and you've got the, the tile that's 
peeling and I mean, we can do better than that. I mean, this is one of, the, with Bali, the two most beautiful places in the world, we can do better than that. And Point. we're allowing mediocrity. And I think this, the group that you're talking about, the, the airport authority, would be able to speed up some of these improvements. But right now, it's, it's we can do much better. Well, we do have a renovation project going on right now. Yes. And it's, it's kind of dragging Ten out a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there was also a big hangar that was being built in 2015, and that one actually is in a lawsuit right now. So it was $78 million that DOT contracted, wow. and it went into a lawsuit. There's still contractors that have, you know, um, their supplies at the airport, they can't touch it because nobody's getting paid right now. So I think what Jean's alluding to is that something needs to speed up this process so that we can get this air, all of our airports up to what we feel is... Speaking of walking. air, Airbnb is another contentious oh, issue that's yes. on its way. Airbnb. You know, we've created another an emotional issue, too. Well, it's yeah. an underground economy in which there's a few thousand people who either rent out a couch or a room or a house, and they're trying to make a living. And right now, the city and county refuses to give them licenses, and the state wants to tax them, and there's kind of a loggerhead between the two. Well, and then you got the neighborhood issues of transient Traffic, people noise, coming yeah. in and out on vacation, playing yes. loud music, coming in at all hours of the night. You know, it can be disruptive to mm -hmm. some neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and we got to appreciate that. Yeah. So we keep kick the can down the road like we do with homelessness, and we say, well, we'll settle it another day, but the thing is going to get worse just like homelessness, which is the other 7,500 pound uh, gorilla in the room, uh, which we're not really having a solution. Well, let me ask a, a loaded question that I think we already know the answer to, but how can you address the homelessness until you have adequate housing? Right, or until you devise a step where affordable housing is actually affordable. And I would even trump on that uh, one, until you can come up with what you've delayed for for a hundred years to give the Hawaiians housing and you've given them a quarter million of acres and you're going to do Section 8, you're going to do affordable housing and then you're going to give people who've got the money housing, it's, it's an oxymoron. It, it, it just doesn't equate. Maybe we need to come back and have another show where we get to talk about the housing and the homeless and, and that sort of thing. And, and you know, we can uh, probably spend the whole 30 minutes on yes. that. Right? But we have reached the end of the show. We just got started. I uh, know, we're just I getting mean, warmed up. I mean, two politicians, you give us a microphone, what do we do? We just talked. Yeah. Now, this has been fun. Uh, but I uh, know I appreciate you taking the time out of session to come over. I know you guys are both very busy. We're running to the Finance that. Committee in about 10 minutes. Yep. And yeah. we're going to head, we're going to wrap this up so you can go um, save us some money. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Reg. All right. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking with uh, the leadership of the GOP in the House. Uh, found out some very interesting uh, facts and figures about some of the bills that are going through. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have Jean and Andrea here. Uh, and hoping to have them come back soon. So until then, we'll see you uh, next Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30 for Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Until